Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Uh, I'm Alessandro, I'm a co-founder on Bitcraft and I'm joined here by Carter. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Carter, I'm the game director on Bitcraft. Today we're going to be discussing uh, how Alpha 1 went, doing a bit of a retrospective on some of the things that went really well and some of the things that we want to improve on and we will be going into some detail on things that um, we're thinking about for Alpha 2 and how we're trying to improve on some of the learnings that we've had from Alpha 1. So just as a overall uh, on how Alpha 1 went, we feel that it had a very strong start. Uh, also, it was super exciting for us to see all the hype around the game. It was kind of crazy and a little surreal to see the game being streamed on Twitch uh, after like so many months and years of uh, development and closed alphas and NDA. Um, just rest assured, we were taking frantic notes throughout um, those streams and uh, reading everyone's comments on Discord, uh, think, seeing the comments in chat in game. Um, so uh, we definitely had a ton of notes after the end of the alpha, um, but uh, we're definitely excited also that many of you, many, many of you have told us that you really enjoyed your time in Bitcraft and you can't wait to be back. Um, so yeah, we really feel that we had a strong start here with Alpha 1 um, and there's many things that went well. Awesome. So just a few of the things that I saw was we saw great engagement on the core tiered content of the game. It was really awesome seeing large groups of players come together and pick their specializations, form a group and help each other to pro uh, progress through the game much faster than we even anticipated. Um, some players and groups reaching all the way to tier six um, before the end of the test, which was very impressive to see. Uh, we were also blown away with just the amount of players who played really deeply in the game. And we could especially see this on the fan-made leaderboard um, that was going around, seeing how so many of the players had sunk so much time into their chosen skill or how, how deep some of the players reached in the, the levels and the content uh, was definitely beyond our expectations. I think one of the things that we always notice is that we always underestimate how much people will be able to do in the allotted time. We had some estimate completely like off. I think people took, I don't know if half the time, but maybe nearly half the time uh, of what we thought it was going to take. Uh, and this has consistently been something that, even though we know that we're probably overestimating and we're trying to correct for that, people still are able to uh, do the things that we think was going to take a lot longer in a much shorter time. They're able to like do things efficiently, work together. Uh, so that that's obviously cool to see. For sure. And I think the to kind of sum it all up, what we've seen is that we have really good confidence in the base skeleton of the, the game's tiered content. And so what we want to do for the future is taking that foundation and really fleshing out the meat of the game's content to build out more activities to do, more horizontal content, more things to unlock that provide improvements to your character and the things you can do. Um, we're really excited about like the next step of adding content to Bitcraft now that we've got kind of a good validation of this uh, base tiered content. Um, and I think that kind of leads into a lot of the learnings that we had during Alpha 1, especially on just the live ops side running the game in kind of a live way for a longer test, um, especially Alpha 1 being the largest playtest we've done to date, just dealing with such a larger volume of players, as well as the fact that the game wasn't under NDA meant that there was all sorts of um, kind of public attention on the game and pe lots of people watching the game that weren't playing the game that we really wanted to try and work to figure out how we can keep everything running smoothly, uh, even more so than in the rougher pre-alphas that we've done in the past. And so um, just learning about how we can better uh, address customer support issues and player support issues, making sure that we can uh, make sure people don't end up, you know, blocked in the game and we can provide the, the right um, tools to support players um, getting kind of sorted out. Uh, as well as some of the things on our end of like streaming the game uh, ourselves and learning a lot of things about how to do that and how to make that engaging for players and just the amount of attention we've uh, got from our community doing that and seeing how much people enjoyed those uh, streams as like a big community event was really awesome and I think we'll be doing a lot more of those in the future. It's going to become a tradition for sure that we do uh, having a kickoff stream and and. Uh a send-off stream at the end, but we'll probably try to do more also while the alphas are running. 
um, because I think that they're, they're a lot of fun for players also just to be able to ask questions to us directly um, and we are able to kind of answer things also while the test is running. I think that would be cool. So on the technical side, uh, there's many things that we learned um, and I will go a bit deeper into one of them, uh, which is uh, kind of the performance of Space Envy because this is another product that uh, we're working on and we're very proud of. I wanted to explain a little some of the things that went well and some of the things that we're improving on on the Space MDB side. Um, so I think it was definitely a success for us that we were able to do, um, you know, uh, several hundred CCU at the beginning of the test. We were able to also figure out, thanks to, you know, the many things that people did during the, the Alpha, the many buildings that they built, and some of the things that they were doing that we were, and weren't really able to test using bot testing internally. Um, we were able to figure out like where are the bottlenecks and improve that um, kind of much beyond where we were at the beginning of the alpha. I think we are confident now we could go like, you know, close to a thousand CCU without issue. And to clarify on what that exactly means. Um, so we're talking here about single node performance. So uh, we both believe that we, would, we are going to be able to do more on a single node just with space and improvements and performance. Um, so just with specifically performance improvements, but also um, the long-term vision of Bitcraft as a single world MMO is that it's going to require a multi-node uh, architecture. So this means like multiple shards uh, that players will move between as they move geographically on, in the game world. Uh, so that's how the game will scale beyond, you know, single node CCU, which will be in probably in the low thousands. But if you're thinking about, okay, how, how does a large... Uh, how, how does Bitcraft envision having everyone in a single world? Uh, really, that's the way you would do it, is you, you are going to have multiple shards and people will be crossing between servers uh, as they move geographically in the game world. And so those are the plans for Bitcraft and SpaceMDB and how, how that will scale and how that will go. Um, there's also other things that we learned uh, on the technical side, having to do more with uh, just customer support, tooling, uh, and how to improve that. There's definitely uh, things that we were doing a lot of, for example, people getting stuck uh, in some situations. For example, people were very eager to try and uh, go beyond the edge of the world with their boats and then getting stuck there. Uh, and at the beginning, we we're doing some of these uh, things manually where we we're running some commands to get people unstuck. Uh, now we're built, now uh, as, a, as a result of some of the things we've been doing, now we have a bunch of tools ready uh, for Alpha 2 so that if some of these things repeat, we'll be able to address them. Of course, we fix all the underlying bugs that caused uh, the issue in the first place, but um, I'm sure there will be other issues that will, that will creep up. And so we now have a very flexible custom support tooling system that will allow us to um, very quickly address the common issues that people are encountering. Uh, and so that's that's definitely like a big part of, of what we've learned in, in Alpha 1. So there's a few more things that are coming in Alpha 2 since uh, now we mentioned a little bit uh, some of the learnings that uh, we've uh, gathered during Alpha 1. So um, there's a few things coming in Alpha 2. The big one is empires, which many of you are discussing currently. Uh, and because of the importance of this feature and also the interest around it. We feel like it's um, useful for us to do a video that just is dedicated to empires alone, uh, which will be coming out very soon. So stay tuned for that. We'll go into more detail on many of the questions that you have um, posed us uh, in the past few days uh, on empires. And, uh, and I think we'll be able to clarify some of the things that uh, there, there is confusion on. Uh, but in addition to empires, uh, there's a few things on the technical side that I want to mention because they are very cool. And I think that uh, they are very interesting for some of you to hear about, I believe. So for example, um, on the space MDB side, we have one really cool new feature that will be available in Alpha 2, which is uh, hot reloading of server code. So this is not a very common thing or probably unheard of, at least from me. Um, and we will be able to change the code of the server without disconnecting any of the clients. So some of you may remember that during Alpha 1, uh, we had posted, uh, we used to post uh, these messages, these developer updates uh, with um, 
uh, warnings about the server going down for some amount of time with uh, when we're doing uh, an update to server code. Now that is all going away. I will be able to uh, replace server code without you even noticing, which is kind of crazy and it's really cool. Um, the other thing is we encountered an issue during Alpha 1 uh, in the first during the first weekend, I believe, uh, where SpaceMD went down and then the restart time of SpaceMD was very long because of an issue that we had. Uh, and that's one of the things we fixed. So if we have to change the SpaceMD code while Alpha 2 is running, um, that won't be, um, that will require a server restart. So we won't be able to do a, a hot reload uh, in that case. But it, when we have to do that, the restart time will be much, much faster. And so the downtime that we will experience will be uh, on the order of, you know, 10, 15 minutes rather than several hours like it was uh, during Alpha 1. Uh, we also have better control over agents uh, during Alpha 2, which was an issue that we encountered in Alpha 1, um, which you may not have noticed exactly um, that this was all the same thing, but it had to do with NPCs spawning in certain places incorrectly uh, and things like that. Yeah, I think the biggest case where this was affecting players was we had instances of the same agent running multiple times in parallel. This was re resulting in things like bad server performance due to the animals thinking five times more than they should about what they should do. This also resulted in claims and buildings decaying about three times faster than they were supposed to because there was multiple copies of the same agents running. This all stemmed from just like bad control over how we manage these agents or even the ability to see like how many instances of the same agent is running and being able to prevent multiple instances of them running. And so um, I guess, some Alessandro can mention like some of the ways that this is going to be improved. The important part here is that um, the way the scheduling of uh, the agents or reducers, like they're called in Space NV, is done uh, with the new update is that um, you'll have exact control over the timers uh, and how they're stored and you'll have direct access to them. Previously, we didn't really have access to the timers themselves on like how frequently something ticks. So when we scheduled an agent to run with some frequency, we had no control or no insight into like how frequently it was actually running because that was not exposed to us from the space MV side, us as the Bigcraft user, like as the users of space MV as, as Bigcraft developers. Um, and so now instead we'll be able to see exactly like what the timers are and will be able to remove if, if you've noticed like oh we actually made a mistake we scheduled this agent twice um we'll be able to remove one of those instances and then it will just stop running previously we had to bring the server down and back up just for that to uh clean itself up and uh and so that's that's one of the ways in which we'll be able to improve uh, the agents and that system and there's a few other things that are coming there's many other things but maybe some of the things that we want to highlight because they were a particular pain point for players uh, is that we had an issue with resource spawning and definitely those of you who are looking for tier one fish um, notice this uh, the most and we fixed an important bug that we've had with uh, the resource respawner logic and so we should be able to um, have much better control over the resource respawn rate uh, and hopefully never get into a place where a resource is um, so low in the world that people especially like in, in lower tiers, so that people are prevented from progressing early in the game. Um, the other thing I want to mention uh, is that we fixed a lot of exploits and also big thanks to many of the community members who um, made it their priority to try to break the game. And, uh, you know, we really appreciate that. Uh, that's what the alpha is for. And um, we thank you for your service and uh, we try to fix all of the ones you reported. Please report more in Alpha 2 if you find any. Yeah, I think it also really speaks to how powerful Space Time DB is for uh, addressing things like this um, because all of the logic is just in the, the module reducers. And so when we did find an exploit, it wasn't a matter of like, oh, this is some race condition between two clients or some other crazy thing. It was generally just, there was a little bit of logic that was wrong in the reducer. And as soon as we saw the example of how things were going wrong, it was generally like, 
a very trivial fix um, on the server module. And so, um, yeah, we're really excited about just seeing that actually in action through alpha one, like seeing some exploits, figuring out how they were happening and then seeing exactly why they're happening in the code and just being able to correct the code and have them be kind of fixed across the board was really um, satisfying and shows a lot of promise, I think for space to be for the future that hopefully, you know, games where they have a gold dupe bug and then it's basically impossible to remove because it's so embedded in the networking of the game and assumptions and race conditions between the client and server and just not having an easy way to fix that i think we're pretty optimistic that these types of exploits are going to be something we can continue to squash as soon as we understand how they're happening still the last thing i wanted to mention here on the improvements that we're making there is a enormous list of quality of life improvements that uh, we made just observing people play or just reading people's feedback. Uh, we've tried to address the highest priority ones and that's going to be a bit of a theme for the alphas is that we'll address a bunch of them. Not all, we can't address all of them, it's impossible between the time that we have. Uh, but we will address the ones that are highest priority and then we'll do another alpha and then hopefully the new highest priority ones will not be as painful as the previous set, but there will be a new list and then we'll just address the highest priority there and go on like this until all the ones that are left are just ones that we can live with or just that we can kind of slowly chip away at without them being super painful for players. All right, and then on, on the gameplay side, um, Carter is going to go a bit more deeply on some of the improvements there, uh, especially to do with, you know, the beginning of the game uh, and uh, some of the other um, improvements that we're making to the game. On the gameplay side, we also identified a bunch of areas for improvement uh, from Alpha 1 looking towards the future Alphas. So some stuff here will be in Alpha 2, but uh, some stuff we um, won't be able to sink our teeth into until maybe Alpha 3 or beyond. Um, but uh, some of the areas are like, especially at the beginning of the game, we noticed that um, a lot of players kind of just ended up overwhelmed and didn't really get into the, the fun game loop of the game. And so we really want to focus on improving this so more players can kind of get over that just first few minutes hurdle of just getting your bearings in the game and really have those players, you know, get through that first hour and start to get into the game loop and be able to really enjoy the game. Um, like many of you guys did in Alpha 1. And so this means focusing on a more fun introduction to the game loop. So like getting people into kind of trying out the various professions in the game more smoothly and in a more exciting way. I think introducing more survival aspects to the early game as well. This is something that we've had in past pre-alphas and we've, you know, turned on and off as we were testing different aspects of the game. So I think bringing back um, more of that is going to be something you'll see in the coming alphas. Um, another thing is moving uh, more of the complicated systems in the game to be a little bit introduced later. Um, so this could be stuff like the claims and the supplies system. I think it's something that ends up getting in the way of your first few minutes of just like starting to have fun in the game of like, hey, we're explaining to you all this important stuff that you need to care about for like the long term in the game. Um, but it doesn't really need to be in that those first few minutes. And so we're working on designing ways to allow the player to kind of play through the early game without bogging them down with some of these complicated systems that aren't super pressing for them to learn about right away. Um, I yeah, think I think so there, there's an issue with uh, with like uh, people being encouraged to like start claims early, right? Like the, Exactly. They were, so, yeah. so that kind of gets to the next point, which is um, we definitely encourage too many players to start claims, especially right at the beginning of the game. Uh, and this is... Uh, it's not something that we ultimately want in Bitcraft. The vision for Bitcraft is that there'll be much fewer claims than there are people. And a lot of people will be ga uh, gathering and congregating and potentially even living on uh, a small set of claims. And that's really what encourages the specialization and the cooperation of players and trading between players. Uh, if you have all these people kind of uh, ending up in the same place as opposed to everyone has their own claim and you have just this like dotting of player claims all across the world um, and as many of you who played alpha one especially later in the alpha and went to the areas where players were spawning you'll see that that was definitely the case and so a lot of that's on us for how the game the onboarding was encouraging players to kind of get started with claims but it also comes to um 
some of the challenges that existed of like, it wasn't really viable for you to join someone else's claim if they didn't kind of fully trust you and welcome you in and give you permission to do everything. Uh, it became kind of not really a viable way to play and progress in the game. And so we're looking on ways to make that a lot more uh, possible in the game. So if you join uh, an existing claim, but you don't have full permissions and you haven't rented your own house there, how can we make it so you can play the game and progress without necessarily feeling a need to just start your own claim to be able to play the game properly? We really want to address that. Um, another thing that came up too was the meta around XP and like the best ways to get XP. Uh, definitely had some flaws that um, were not aligning with the kind of goals we had for um, how we want players to play the game. And so I think the biggest thing there was just how kind of broken the crit system was at the start of the alpha. And we ended up having to nerf that pretty substantially. I guess rest assured that um, I know people weren't super happy with the nerf, um, but it was, I think, something that needed to be done because it was only going to get worse as players got higher in the levels. Um, I know people aren't happy with where it is after the nerf. We aren't happy with that either. We really want to reimagine it in a way that better encourages the goals that we have for how people play the game, but also doesn't require that to completely nerf that system to make it not exciting. We want to figure out a way to like reintroduce um, crits in a way that makes it rewarding, but also incentivizes the right thing. And so part of that is inverting the current meta of the best XP rates being to chase the lowest tier thing you can gather because of that um, differential. And instead, for the future, we want to reward um, kind of chasing the highest tier stuff you can um, to be the best source of XP. I think another thing that comes with that is making sure that the item yield matches the demand. And so especially with the material funnel ups that we see as you go up the tiers, uh, we found that a lot of players kind of found the highest tier materials and items to be the least valuable because they were equally as abundant as the low tier ones, but you needed such less quantity of them that a lot of players were dropping them because it wasn't even worth picking them up um, because you just had too many of them to begin with. So we really wanna address that as well so that the high tier items feel valuable and the high tier actions that you can do are the best sources of XP. Um, and so definitely going to make some changes to both of those uh, uh, for future alphas. I think the last thing that we really identified as an area that needs improvement uh, that we kind of knew going into alpha one, uh, but it was clear from alpha one just how much we need to um, tweak some things to, to make this a very important part of Bitcraft work, which is uh, the ability for players to trade. Um, we, we definitely added some stuff that was in alpha one to allow players to trade in different ways, but it's clear that with what's in there right now, it just wasn't, uh, enough for, um, large scale, like wide scale trade to be happening. I think trade was really only happening between kind of parties who organized to do specific types of trades and kind of socially set that up. There wasn't a lot of kind of asynchronous systemic trade happening in the world. Um, and let alone people just walking into a town, buying some stuff, taking it to another town and selling it for a profit um, because there just wasn't um, some of the following things. Uh, so number one is like, there's just poor access to information. You didn't really know what you could buy where, and this is something that we really want to address in the future. Obviously it's, um, it's not a trivial thing to add to the game. We want to think about like, what is the right way to do this so that, you know, there still maintains some aspect of like exploring the world and finding out this information, but also that you have the information you need to make decisions about how you want to trade stuff. Um, I think the next thing is the things that can be used as currencies, specifically hex coins, but also other things um, were just either not accessible enough or they had too high of a denomination that meant that, you know, trading small items like a few logs or, you know, a plank or an ingot wasn't really possible because you needed so few coins or other items to represent those that it was hard to trade something really small. So we want to make the denomination smaller so you can more granularly set prices for small things. Uh, and then I think the last thing is just giving more ways for you to asynchronously sell stuff when you're not the owner of a claim. I think this kind of ties back to the thing above it of saying like, 
hey, you should be able to go live in an existing claim without being the owner or having full permission. And part of that is the ability to sell. So we really wanna make sure that there's a way that anybody who's visiting or living in a claim has a way that they can sell stuff to other people on the claim uh, easily. And so that, that's definitely something that we're, uh, we have a plan for that we're working on. This will also address the issue around solo play that some of you have identified, some of, the, of, some of you who play to try to play solo in Bigcraft. And it's that to progress through the tiered content in settlements, at some point it becomes really difficult to do if you are not, if you don't have many uh, players alongside you who are, special, who are specializing in different skills. And the way to fix that is really with making trade a lot more accessible so that you can specialize in one thing and you can progress if you want to by trading some of the things that you can make with your with your skill for things that you cannot make with your skill um, and make that just a lot more accessible. Right now, if you're trying to have a solo claim, you know, if you're a hermit who wants to live in the mountains and just want to kind of slowly progress at your own pace, it's almost impossible if you can't trade easily because you'll reach a point where you need fish oil and and then you're kind of done. Uh, while what really should be happening is that you will get um, some system that will tell you, okay, this is how you can trade for fish oil somewhere in the world. And then it will become a challenge to overcome of, okay, I have to get to that place in the world uh, where these people are selling fish oil and I will exchange something that I can make, which, you know, if I'm a, a forester up in, you know, the forest, I, I can trade some of the raw materials that I can gather with my high, with my high level forestry skill for, for the fish oil and then I can use that to um, reach the next tier of content. So that's uh, how trade fits into um, that problem as well. Yeah, so I think um, obviously everything we mentioned here is not all of what's coming in Alpha 2. Like Alessandro said, we've got tons and tons of bug fixes, quality of life improvements, little content things. And we've got some of these larger gameplay kind of incentive structural changes that I've mentioned. Uh, and we've got all of those technical uh, performance related stuff, as well as the customer support uh, improvements that we've made. Um, you know, all of this and more is coming for Alpha 2. And we have even more plans for stuff that just is too large to fit into Alpha 2 that's already being kind of started in the background uh, for Alphas beyond that. Um, but yeah, we're really excited to you know, talk more about the empires in the future uh, and share a bit more information there. I know there's a lot of questions as well as just have people get into Alpha 2 when it's ready soon and, uh, you know, see where we go from there. Definitely stay tuned. Uh, empires is going to, um, so the Empires video is going to uh, come out soon. Um, and um, yeah, if you have questions, post them in the comment uh, and we will we always read those and you know if, if there's anything there that we feel like oh yeah we didn't really touch on on this particular topic uh, and it is important we'll we'll try to address it the next time we do a video like this one uh, but yeah thank you for watching uh and uh, tyler, tyler will tell you to like and subscribe right after this don't forget to like and subscribe hit that smash that bell icon